Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about why I'm moving from SvelteKit to F-sharp. So SvelteKit has been my go-to front-end framework for the past few years. It was a breath of fresh air from React land, providing a simpler, more streamlined experience, especially with respect to routing, templating, and data management. But I never felt it was the right tool for building a full stack app. I'm not much of a node lover myself, and JavaScript just never felt stable enough for my core logic. So usually I built apps with a dual monolith architecture with SvelteKit on the front end and F-sharp on the back end, handling the majority of my app logic. And you can kind of see the stack here um, where I've got a bunch of little containers. Uh, and on the front end, I just got like a SvelteKit monolith. And then on the back end, I've got my F-sharp monolith. And this would be doing, you know, all the data operations and stuff. And you could imagine it's like serving up an API. Um, and then when someone would hit my website, they would actually hit my SvelteKit monolith, which would then go fetch the data it needs um, if it needs data from the API. And this is a very common pattern. Um, like at Rippling, we do the same thing where it's Python on the back end and a big React monolith on the, the front end. Um, and so if you can't bundle them in the same project or it's too hard to do so, which honestly, you know, modern day web frameworks are like pretty big and cumbersome. So they often require their own monolith and it's just easier that way. Um, this is a very common pattern for, for dealing with that. So over time, I formalized this into a project boilerplate that made it easy for me to spin up projects with my favorite stack. That boilerplate is called CloudSeed. With the recent resurgence of server-side rendering paradigms, empowered by tools like HTMX and Alpine, I began to wonder anew whether this was actually the best stack for me. So I did some experimenting. Ultimately, I decided it wasn't and have been migrating my front ends over to F Sharp, starting with my website and now migrating CloudSeed, my F Sharp project boilerplate. And the rest of this post will explore why I decided to move from SvelteKit to F Sharp. And so we're answering the question, why did I decide to move from SvelteKit to F Sharp? All right, the overall answer is this. Ultimately, a pure F Sharp code base led to numerous wins, all stemming from the simple fact that it's simpler. Simpler to build, simpler to scale, and simpler to maintain long-term. As I'm in the business of building and then writing about it, this simplicity leads to a better fit for my projects and my life. And so this is the, the new you know, overview of the stack that I'm basically using. So I mean, you can imagine, you know, if there's data, you can use whatever server you or database you want, but really here's the, the main thing, which is this one monolith of F sharp. Um, and it provides everything you need. So you could, you know, provide an API like I was using it for before. But now with these new tools, we can actually build very rich user interfaces, um, you know, coupled with your, your favorite things like Tailwind, and just build them only with one monolith, which which I think is pretty game changing. So in the rest of this post, we'll explore this decision from several different perspectives. The first is simplicity, then scalability, and finally, flexibility. Simplicity. F Sharp is my favorite language and has been the core part of my tech stack for several years. The move from SvelteKit to F Sharp makes it an even bigger part of that stack. The first point here is one is simpler than two. While SvelteKit is an excellent front end framework and way better than React, in my opinion, and I love TypeScript, which is what I used for most of my SvelteKit apps, it's my second favorite, TypeScript being my second favorite language. They're just not F Sharp. Regardless of how good each choice is for their respective jobs, together, in my dual monolith architecture, they are two things. Two things simply has more overhead than one, in terms of context switching between languages, integration work between technologies, and system designs you have to keep track of. Thus, a move from SvelteKit and F Sharp to just F Sharp is just simpler. And I think like people know this when like you're not good at coding in different technologies, but often people think that once you've gotten good at two different technologies, it's like there's no overhead shift um, or context switching involved between like TypeScript and F-sharp or, you know, TypeScript and Python, you know, whatever technologies you're good at. But that's just not true because there's always context switching um, in terms of like, you know, just the language itself, obviously, but also like the type systems, you know, like is a string over here equal to a string over here? Or like, how do we do nested objects? How do we, we have to figure out like serialization as well. How do we make sure that the types are, are loaded? There's all this like extra overhead from two things, especially when those two things are not connected in code and we're, we're going over the wire um, that you just don't have to think about if it's just one. And of course, this is, you know, one of my big uh, cases for why monoliths work out so well compared to these other architectures that we've come up with like microservices, uh, but that's that's a whole different post. My next point here is that front end with F sharp is good actually. For a long time, I stayed away from F sharp front end because it felt old and crufty. To some extent it is. 
server-side HTML hasn't really changed much since the old enterprise -y days. But if you're into the more HTML-y style of templating, which is the approach that SvelteKit and Liquid and Handlebars and things like that go with, then it's not much of a jump to simply use templating libraries or building your own raw string HTML and f -sharp. This won't get you super fancy client-side interactions, but if you're building simple CRUD apps, which I mostly build and honestly most businesses build, then even these older, slower feeling HTML pages work pretty well and are incredibly easy to build. And yeah, one of the things I loved about SvelteKit is that you know, it goes more HTML-y and so you're closer to the thing you're actually rendering. And so the overhead you have, again, between like switching between paradigms of like, oh, I'm building this up in JavaScript and now it's JSX. And then what does this actually turn into under the hood? To me is just much smaller because it, it looks like the thing that you're actually producing. And I think one of the cool parts of, of that approach and with like these other templating approaches is that it's easier to like port. Like if you have a template and you want to move, you know, stacks like SvelteKit to F-sharp or something like that, it's very easy because it's just HTML. You don't have like all these other things like hooks and, and React land and stuff that you're going to have to figure out how to um, express that in a new language. It's just the markup. And so it's very easy to move from one to the other. And yeah, for, for simple CRUD apps, like I would say most things are CRUD apps and even the ones that you might think are not CRUD apps and they're like more complicated and doing something harder, for the most part, they are just CRUD apps with maybe just a little extra bit of things um, sprinkled in for their, their edge or whatever. And so if this is good for simple CRUD apps, it's mostly good for like most CRUD apps, I would, I would pause it. Now, the new unlock for me has been diving into the world of HTMX, where we can actually upgrade our old HTML pages to be more interactive, getting most of the benefits of these client-side frameworks with almost none of the bloat. Read, this is an 80-20. It enables you to empower your HTML so that you can choose to re-render only parts of your HTML pages, which makes them go from feeling old and slow to new and fast. And so I think this is one of the problems with just old HTML and how these old things were built is really the integrations. And HTMX creator has like honestly really good essays and like books on this. Um, I would I would highly recommend reading them um, because I think it's interesting to see like why were these old pages so awful feeling? And it's not because the technologies weren't great. It's just they were basically forcing re-renders on every time you wanted to change something. So every time you change something, you get that flash and then everything has to load back. And so it's just slow. When you think about what these new frameworks were doing and why they feel faster, it's it's only like literally the only thing that they're doing different is that they're re-rendering parts of the page. And the way that they're doing that is they have this huge bloated thing on the client side that's handling state. And so they can see like, oh, that changed. Now I just have to change this little thing. And what HTMX allows you to do is basically say, well, what if we could just do the exact same thing these client side frameworks are doing, which is just change out the one part of the page that change, changes, that the idea is like islands of um, interactivity. And we just handle that logic on the server where all the data actually is anyway. And so you actually, when you think about it, you get all the benefits of client side, but you don't need the bloated client which, you know, I really think is game changing. I really need like a, a probably a full blog post and, and video on this. But the takeaway here is that you can actually build the same thing much easier just by doing pure, simple server side HTML. So yeah, front end with F sharp, good actually. Okay, on to scalability. So at my scale, very small, uh, scalability in terms of performance just isn't that important. But I like to keep it in mind to ensure I'm not shooting myself in the foot later. When we focus on building simple scalable systems, 3S, we can typically find a solution that works well for each of these principles. The first point here is that less work means faster completion. So F sharp is faster than TypeScript, and I've got my benchmark here. Even if it wasn't, moving from a two monolith system to a one monolith system removes an entire IO hop, which makes the architecture or faster. So, you know, if I got my front end here, and then in order for the front end to render fully, it needs to get data, then it's got to like act, access the back end API. And then the API has to go fetch this stuff from wherever it's storing it, and then get it in the right format, serialize that thing, hop it over to the front end, and then the front end can finally do its, its full render. That's like, what, one, two, three hops. But if we, is it three hops? One, two, three, four, five hops, let's say five hops. Um, but if we get rid of the this intermediate hop here, now we just have one, two, three hops. So it's just, just doing less. So it should be no surprise that my F sharp sites run faster than my SvelteKit sites. Though SvelteKit does have a lot of neato tricks which make it competitive. And here I have some uh, benchmarks from my actual sites running in production to kind of show you the difference between these in the real world. My apps never reach a scale that performance is a bottleneck, so this doesn't really matter, but it does make me feel good. The second point is again, less work means faster completion. 
So if performance isn't the bottleneck, what is? For most apps, it's time to build. In almost all cases, the bottleneck is how fast we can build and maintain the app, not how fast the app actually runs. By improving the simplicity of my tech stack, I found my own productivity skyrocket. Scalability is often about solving for the bottlenecks. In this case, it was me. I'm the problem. And here's my argument kind of showing that like the performance of, of things, while it matters, it's usually not the biggest bottleneck. And so when people overly think about it, um, there's usually a, a bigger bottleneck that they could be solving anyway. So you can check that out here. And this is often what I do when I talk about scalability is there's kind of two sides of it. I think about when I'm thinking about simple scalable systems, like we're, we're talking in performance, but we're also talking in build time. And then often we're also talking about flexibility. So how scalable is this in terms of use cases, which we're going to talk about here. Okay. Flexibility. So simple systems are more scalable to more use cases. I like building simple scalable systems, 3S. It's part of my personal motto, 1% better via 3S. The reason I like 3S is it's the only paradigm I've seen that seems to be a silver bullet for most cases. The simpler your systems are and the more robustly they're built, the more useful they are for composing together to build high quality systems for various sizes and purposes. It's not the best choice in 100% of cases, but it's a competitive choice in 90%, and that's good enough for me. And if you're a little functional fan, uh, you might recognize some of these things and these arguments because in my mind, this approach often is a, a very simple scalable system. What I'm looking for in a project boilerplate like CloudSeed is to make my life easier. What I like to do is build things. So my goal is to build that thing as easily and robustly as possible so that I can test it, iterate on it, and or move on to the next thing. And this is like a core principle of the cult of done. And I think is like a good kind of value structure for anyone creating things uh, a lot. I think it's pretty clear that moving from Svelte Kit and F Sharp to just F Sharp makes this a more appealing solution for this use case. If we were trying to sell CloudSeed, a good thought exercise for finding gaps in your solutions, this becomes apparent. And the reason this is a good thought exercise often is because you, you have to think of not just you as the creator of like, why does the world need this, but more think of it from like, why would people want this? Um, so it's a good like rubber ducking exercise, especially from like the, the point of a consumer. So for F Sharp and Svelte Kit, I'd need to convince someone to try both F Sharp and Svelte Kit, both of which are niche technologies. Selling them on one is hard enough, but to sell them on both at the same time, next to impossible. And so you can imagine like there's this Venn diagram and it's like tiny circle spelt kit, tinier circle F sharp. And like the people that would actually want to use this uh, is like the overlap. And those overlaps are probably very small because like their ecosystems are very different. Like F sharp is .NET function backend and spelt kit is often going to be like front end people. Um, so the, just the overlap is tiny, 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 which makes this next to impossible. Now for just F sharp, the market is still small, but it's much larger than the intersection of F sharp and spelt kit because all you got to do is it's like this whole bucket that might be interested in this. Now um, it's not just the intersection. And you can imagine that people are more willing if they're not in any of these buckets to just try one of these buckets as opposed to being like, oh, there's baggage involved, you know, like I just wanted to try F sharp, but now you're, you're giving me Svelte kit like that. That's awful. So I've been having a great time building and experimenting with F sharp. It's a great language that I think is tragically underhyped. I'll keep building with it until it dies, something better or something better finally comes along. If you're looking to get started with F sharp, you might be interested in migrating my sites from Svelte kit to F sharp to show you all the results I had um, from migrating these over and actually running them in production for a few weeks. If you're just trying to get started with F Sharp in general, you can check out this to set up your first web API with F Sharp and Giraffe, which is a popular web framework. And if you're interested in how I'm actually hosting uh, my sites like this, you can check out Build a Simple Markdown blog with F Sharp and Giraffe. And of course, if you're looking for a simple, scalable project boilerplate to kick off your next F Sharp app, might I suggest CloudSeed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.